one minute and five seconds of holy sh**, we hit the mother loader logos. Reading. Discount Home Depot product placement. Also, Home Mart? You couldn't come up with a better Home Depot Walmart ripoff name than that? This guy trying to sneak chips into his sandwich thinks that Denzel won't hear that sh** when he bites down onto it. Sandwich cop. Two guys that work at Home Mart might be friendly, even close, but they are not letting each other finger touch their f***ing food. Have Hollywood screenwriters ever held real jobs? Denzel Washington is lonely as f***. Movie is obsessed with clocks. Honestly, not sure what's worse here. The heart-shaped headphones or the fact that they say love on them with little hearts in place of the O. Has Denzel made a movie with every blonde, precocious child star? This diner's prices are all out of whack. Coffee is $1.50, 50% more than f***ing McDonald's. Corned beef hash is $2.50, a price that seems low for anything containing meat. But then two eggs, toast, and home fries are seven f***ing dollars? I mean, there's simply no standard whatsoever for the pricing of the food in this diner. We betting on what you did before you got here. Like for a living. I'm saying insurance. Bullshit discussion leads to bullshit open questioning of a coworker so that bullshit mystery about a character background can continue bullshitting me to death. The old man's gotta be the old man. Fish gotta be the fish. Gotta be who you are in this world, right? Prostitute? Chloe Grace Moritz steals the Jody Foster from Taxi Driver. So he gets up early, works a regular job, is kind to hookers and fat coworkers. I get it. He's awesome. Or at the 15 minute mark. Can the movie start happening, please? The Equalizer takes the badass former government agent helps the young girl with her singing career thing from Taken. I think you can be anything you want to be. You know, provided you can impress the gatekeepers of the industry you want to break into. Also, she can't be the starting center for the Boston Celtics, or the Pope, or a horse. Change your world. He said to the obviously institutionalized hooker. Yeah, you know, everything's so dark. Makes everything seem possible again. I know she's a lost, way too young call girl, but what the hell is that supposed to mean? Oh, it's about a guy who thinks he's a knight in shining armor. The only thing is... is... He lives in a world where nice don't exist anymore. Nice that the 92nd book on the list is Don Quixote, allowing this dialogue to be extra heavy-handed. Somehow, Alina's pimp knew that she'd be walking out to this gas station tonight. And this is definitely not a routine, because we saw her catching a cab from the diner the first time we saw her. This girl, she's no good. Here's my business card, so you'll know where to kill me later. I heard she's at the ICU at Charmot. Someone beat her up real good. Thanks, extremely helpful diner guy. It's amazing how much news you hear about prostitutes in your line of work. They beat up his hooker acquaintance. No one beats up his hooker acquaintances. Carnival meditation. $9,000 for the trouble made. One month. Bad guy adds a clause to the agreement after the handshake cliche. Whorehouse of the Crystal Skull. Movie steals the hero can figure out every move the bad guys are going to make in a fight thing from Sherlock Holmes. Also, bad guys just let this guy sit here and stare at them for a really long time without doing or saying anything. 16 seconds. It then takes him 28 actual seconds in movie time, but in real life, it was 68. Movie steals yet another page from Taxi Driver as he kills a bunch of dudes who sell underage girls in the skin trade. At least they don't sell heroin-flavored bananas. Am I right, James Bond? On the next, The Equalizer. Yep, he went all the way home before washing the blood off his hands. That just happened. These are for you. I made the way. Damn, couldn't you have picked an easier container than the notoriously tough Pringles can to deliver this message? Or just tell him like a normal person? This special report crawl needs to tell us that the price of gas is three fifty eight per gallon before continuing with the story of the five men who were killed last night. All right, you seen Ralphie? Supposed to be taking that security guard test after work. Calling and quit. Does someone who bothers to put a note about his weight loss in a Pringles can seem to be the type that quits? Well, closed. Closed? What the ever-loving f***? First off, Robert opened the door freely. Second off, it's broad daylight outside. And third, the hours posted clearly state that you're closed at 9 p.m., not when Wheel of Fortune is on. This Russian villain is only a few tailgating SUVs shy of a proper evil motorcade. Come on, what are you gonna do? You gonna sit down with all these guys? This exposition dialogue while driving is so Grand Theft Auto, I'm convinced it's on purpose. Do me a favor, all right? Whatever you do, don't call him Little John, okay? Well, you never told me his nickname in the first place, so that's kind of weird. And why would you randomly bring this up and subliminally plant a seed in his head? Hey, you ever meet this guy? Don't call him Penis Face. He f***ing hates that sh**. The additional 10% you steal, we ignore. We anticipate it as you people are such cliches. That's racist. Also, a movie with nearly every single action movie cliche in it, including this very character, is distasteful of cliches. Well, someone saw Red Dragon. Besides Brett Ratner and me, I mean. Also, this guy's nipples are uncomfortably hard right now. Ask the lady down the street. When they had the fire, same thing could happen to you. With your whole f***ing family in fire. Oh, First off, this phone got some remarkable audio, which leads to the second point. These assholes are actually shaking down businesses with witnesses around? And didn't notice someone taking cell phone video? That f***ing hurt more than the beating. And those corrupt cops were never corrupt again. Ralphie's mom stupidly goes to the window to pull out a wad of cash. For no other reason than to show us, her customers, and any criminal looking inside, she got it back. Yep, they just take you back immediately at jobs you quit with no notice from. That's totally how life works. Bad guy pretends to be really sweet, only to kill someone cliche. Professional killer does this in full view of the front door and numerous open windows, but f***. 
Oh, look, he passed the security guard exam, which he actually missed completely due to quitting his job and sweeping up the Mexican restaurant that day instead. But I'm sure they just give out makeup tests for that thing like candy, as opposed to making truant applicants wait another six months or whatever it is till the next mass testing date. This person walks in the front door several minutes after Slavi arrived, but never comes out. Wait, you were looking earlier at street security footage showing him and the girl coming out, right? Open that. Register. Suddenly, everywhere Robert goes, there are crimes being committed right in front of him. Also, who robs a home mart in broad daylight anyway? And now it's like he's basically addicted to being a violent vigilante in the names of people who are essentially strangers. Every bad guy in this movie has some sort of skull on their person. I know you want to get that guy for stealing from the store, but did you need to steal a hammer from the store? Movie that is all about Denzel kicking ass skips over prime opportunity to show us Denzel kicking ass. He waited until he was back at work, with co-workers, in the f***ing aisle this thing goes in before wiping off the blood. He's on camera right now. F also, Robert stocks a used hammer for resale. Also, that was the most senseless weapon and method of weapon retrieval he could possibly have chosen to beat up or kill the mugger. He's killed dozens already with his fists and whatever he finds in the room. But for this one asshole, he decides to steal on camera from the place where he works. We need to take him clean, live, place of outcome. There's no witnesses. Teddy wants to know who this guy works for, but he's already heard about Robert visiting the beat up hooker in the hospital. How can he be so good at investigation, but not consider the Travis Bickle angle? Oh, hello there, Vio. I nearly missed you but you're to Sony movies like Robots in a Marvel flick. Yo, Black Denali. Here we go. Austin Harold Truck randomly makes an appearance in front of the diner to block these guys' views. He varied from these instructions that I'm gonna kill you, understand? Usually this place has quite a few people in it, but tonight of all nights, a perfect scenario by which only the bad guy and the good guy occupy space in the whole diner. Prima, you got A side, front, follow. You got C, I got B. Teddy knows that Robert has a considerable set of skills, yet allows everyone to split up, thereby allowing Robert to easily take on one guy if it comes to that. Hero villain kicks down the door where you think the hero villain is, but the hero villain is somewhere else cliche. Susan. I just need to know who this man is. Oh, your dumbass cell phone did not take a picture that was this good, to the point of being a perfect portrait of Teddy. Your friend here is who Pushkin sends when he's got a problem. No matter what the situation, Teddy has his picture taken like he's going to be on a baseball card. He won't stop until he kills you and anyone you care about. Well, at least after he gets to know you first. He didn't come for help. Came for permission. Seriously? The guy with no qualms about killing numerous people in this movie needs permission to kill the bad guy? Also, damn, I never thought I'd say this in my lifetime, but this movie really wastes Bill Pullman. Amazing how every person in this movie has the same damn Sony phone. This guy, who was on high alert, decides to go straight to the car instead of checking for people who might kill him inside the garage. You're such a f Why don't you get out of here and go f yourself, you fing motherfucker? Come on, this dude would already be talking by now. Who is he actually protecting at this point? He's a dead man as far as his employers are concerned anyway. So he's handcuffed to something and Denzel has a remote control, but does the car not have interior buttons to roll down the windows or open the f***ing door? Denzel is gone. Since when do remote dongles override all other controls for a car? Bobby's able to trick his way into the crime syndicate of the Russian who obsessively wants to kill him, because a guy like that would never pass out pictures of his obsession kill target to the people who work for him. Can I see it? Oh, you want to see my gun? Good God, man. How in the world does this plan work? He'll get too close to me, I'll take his gun, and nobody in the whole place will have itchy trigger fingers and blow me away when I do that. Do the right thing. Actually, that is one of the few Spike Lee movies you're not in, but thanks for playing. Check this out. So, you found this, then closed it all up again just so you could dramatically reveal it to this guy? My men will find him. Thanks, dude. We probably established that a long time ago, probably before this dinner even, but good to get a reminder once in a while. Shouldn't you just let it go to voicemail? Don't you, by ignoring the call after three rings, communicate to the other party that you actively ignored their call? He's not coming back. I guess Robert just destroyed that guy in the bathroom, and luckily no one was around to see it. Even a bathroom attendant, which they have in classy places like this. I guess no one stumbles on this dude's body either. Not while Robert's here, anyway. I have no feelings about you one way or the other. Except for being obsessed about tracking you down and killing you, which is totally not a feeling, man. So this good man opened his home to this boy. Movie pauses the action two minutes for Robert to tell a story about Teddy's secret Oliver Twisted days. This is the second time this movie will put Bobby at kill distance from the main bad guy without letting him actually kill him. Because this movie needs its two hour, 12 minute length, dammit, for story. Scarlet's About Me is the exact same as Crystal's About Me. In fact, they have the same age and same height, despite the fact that the stuff Robert clicks on shows different ages and different heights. When picking illegal Russian escort services, I expect their website to be well maintained. Check your personal email. Make sure you're sitting down when you do. Because I just emailed you all the gigabytes as an attachment. Of course, walking away from the fireball had to be in this movie at some point. This is just like Man on Fire, only with a more grown-up Dakota Fanning. I mean, Chloe Grace Moritz. There is no way he could have timed these gas-based explosions to perfectly match his slow and steady escape walk. Funny how they got pictures of Robert doing best buddy things with Ralphie, especially since we didn't see that during the bad guys take photos of Robert scene. Also, he's going to infer just from this photo that these two are close enough to constitute leverage, 
which would be bad enough on its own if this photo weren't also several days old. Meaning this guy is just now having this epiphany after having these pictures for days. Your life for them. Go ahead and kill them. I don't even know who they are. Also, the supposedly smart Teddy commits a cardinal bad guy sin and doesn't bring an insurance hostage with him to his location, just in case Robert decided to save the home Martin employees. Mr. McCall? Robbie? They came into the store. Then they commit yet another horrible cardinal sin by allowing Ralphie to disclose their location. F***ing amateurs, man. They knew you worked here ages ago, goddammit, and only just now thought of the kidnap the co-workers plan. My men that was Wait, Denzel answered call waiting. How do you end that call and interrupt him with beeps? They can track his location by cell phone, but still needed this elaborate, desperate ruse to find and kill him. What's your spear me? Can't you just kill one of them and then go investigate the music on the PA? Also, it's just music, right? Who cares? You basically drop everything just to go investigate music. Do you know how stupid that sounds coming out of my mouth? Now try watching it. <coughs> we just f***ing saw an exterior shot that had no f***ing Denzel in it. I don't care how well Robert speaks Russian. His accent should have tipped that shit off immediately. Very clever, Mr. McCall. Not really. Any trained professional badass would have been able to pull this off the way you blundered the thing. I decided to come see you. For the third time this movie. Yeah, I'll be waiting for you. Instead of killing you easily like I could have done twice in this movie already. Find the hostages. Then the supposedly smart bad guy doesn't even set up henchmen around the exits to make sure no one got out or can get out. Movie turns into Home Depot alone. Thank goodness the bad guys decided to explore the aisles in such a way that leaves Bobby time to set booby traps. You know, Robert would make a pretty good horror movie villain. If we watch this from the perspective of the bad guys, Denzel would be like Jason or Michael Myers. Huh, you can butane torch a doorknob in a darkened Home Depot without anyone hearing it or seeing the light from the flame. Who knew? Home Depot alone too! Lost in aisle two at new work! Why hasn't Robert taken one of the bad guys' guns yet? This guy really loves killing people with tools. During all the commotion around the bathroom fixtures and shit, none of the remaining bad guys show up to help out. Ah! After going the whole movie being untouchable, Bobby suddenly starts meeting guys that can hit him and hang with him near the film's conclusion. I'm sure it's just a coincidence. <laughs> Ralphie decides not to bother with any indication that he's around when sneaking up on Robert, who he just found out is a deadly killer and just iced a guy with a mirror shard. Ah! These guys have rifles with night vision scopes on them. That's the best they could do? It's Ralphie. He said not to leave anybody behind. Okay, first of all, Ralphie is a dumbass. Second of all, recently passed the security guard exam Ralphie is better equipped to find Bobby in this place than actual trained soldiers. Okay, so the breakers were off and there wasn't any power. And how did Robert set up this microwave to suddenly start cooking shit, complete with a countdown and everything, once the power came back on? Even if he set this up before the breakers were turned off, the microwave wouldn't suddenly start up like this, because microwaves aren't that smart. Also, Bobby knew that these people terrible at their job would be smart enough to follow his blood trail into the break room at just the right time to make this work. You knew they'd find a way to make it rain during this sequence, even though it's inside. That's right, folks, it's Denzel. He's got his own theme song, and man, does he look cool in slow-mo while the sprinkler system rains down in the home mark. Movie almost goes full Sin City here at the end. I think ironic raindrops are actually more poignant than actual tears, don't you? What do you gain from my death? I don't get why Robert doesn't just kill this guy already. Of course, we know he's got something f***ed up ready to go. I mean, this is sort of left up to chance. Robert has to hope this works, but I guess he just knew it would. What happens if the guy is the least bit wary of tricks like this or is in any way smart? All this for a hooker he once discussed old man in the sea with at a shitty diner. Damn, this girl disappeared for 90 minutes of the movie, and she's the whole reason this got started. I got a job too. Like a real job with real hours and stuff. You'll be happy to know that the girl too young to ever have started hooking has, in the absence of Russian overlords, gotten some kind of menial job she's sure to hate in three weeks. And just in case you weren't convinced this movie was pieced together from almost all movies, here's Moby's version of New Dawn Fades, which is pretty much identified with the movie Heat, taking us to the credits. And the moral of the story is, if your wife is dead and you use your military training to avenge a beaten up hooker, your next move is Craigslist. Final shot really, really wants you to credit it for resembling a famous painting. Don't call him Little John, okay? Then put your little hand in mine. Change your world. And I can change, change the world. Let me get this straight. I steal your dope. And then you walk in here and you bring me more men? <laughs> you got one part of that wrong. This is not meth. Oh, oh yeah. I'm Batman. I don't know who you are. 
I don't know what you want. If you are looking for ransom, I can tell you I don't have money. But what I do have are a very particular set of skills. Skills I've acquired over a very long career. Skills that make me a nightmare for people like you. Mother is sucking me. You don't want to hear that I got f***ing cigarettes put out of me when I was a little kid. The mother stabbed me. You don't want to hear that shit, Skylar. Where were the other drugs going? I never knew. I don't know. I swear to God. Swear to me! Ah!